Hey y'all, it's your girl Brittany Passion and you are tuning into The Culture with Historically Black Sin. You are now tuned in to another episode of Historically Black Sense. We got a very, very special guest with us today, Miss Brittany Passion, hey. model, host, actress. I don't know, man. She wears so many <laughs> hats, you know. <laughs> but yeah, what's going on? How you doing? I'm doing good. Glad to be here. You forgot you're my radio personality. Brand ambassador. Okay, I said host people. I'm sorry. Host <laughs> and radio and radio personality. Jackie, yeah, I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. She got so much going on, man. Yes, but thank yes. you for coming through. Yes, thank you for having me. Anytime, you know, you always welcome on the All couch. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get into it. Um, Tell the people a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, like DC said, I am a model, actress, radio personality, host, brand ambassador. I do a little bit of it all. Um, I'm also a CEO of my own company, The Passion Experience, and then my radio show is The South Atlanta. So, I'm just here in Atlanta grinding, doing my thing. Dope, dope, dope. <laughs> well, let's get into it. Right. I see you brought a shirt here. Um, I always ask people that comes on the show bring a shirt or something of significance from yes. the HBCU or uh, the Vine Now organization or whatever it may be. Yes. So she brought a shirt. A shirt. Tennessee State University. Yes, TSU. TSU. Yes, okay. big all day. TSU. Um, it's so many colleges to choose from. Yes. What made you choose an HBCU first off? Okay. Or did it choose you? Well, honestly, I always knew that I wanted to go to HBCU, mainly because, for me, it was rebellion. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I grew up in the hood, but my mom sent us to charter schools, and high school, I went to private Catholic school. Okay. Really? So, yes. A lot of people don't know that, but I did. It was a Catholic school. Okay. And so, it, for me, I wanted to get back to the culture. Um, I feel like I missed a part of that during high school, except when we had, you know, basketball games and stuff. Definitely, but definitely. then when I walked home, you know, I was in the hood. But, <laughs> but no, I always knew that I wanted to go to HBCU, and most of my teachers and coaches, they all went to HBCU. So mm. I was like, okay. Okay. What made you to Tennessee State University? That they give a little bit more depth. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Surprisingly, TSU was not my first choice. Really? Yes, Hampton was. Oh man. Hampton in Virginia, dope. another HBCU. But I went on a college tour. Okay. Went to Hampton, and I was like. They a little too bougie. <laughs> I'm a little, you know, I got a little bougie side of my They too bougie. And they had so many rules. So I was like, uh. And it was 10 hours from home. So I'm from Ohio yeah. originally. So it was 10 hours from home. I'm like, mm. And then Clark Atlanta was my mm. second choice. Clark. Yes. So I came down to Clark. <laughs> and I was like, this feels like too much like home. So I was like, nah, I'm going to get so some you, trouble. You, you got a lot going on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> There's two schools that's already down. So I, yes. I'm thinking that you were like were very picky, first of all. I was. Alright. I was. Okay. I was. So what was your third choice? Because I know you had a third one. Oh, so this is the third. Tennessee State University. Shout out to Tennessee State <laughs> University, I guess. Yes. Um, you know, the third time is a charm. Yes. Um <laughs> I loved it. So I was like, okay, cool, TSU. I had family in Nashville. My best friend was going to TSU. Um, I heard about the band. Mm -hmm. And then I came down in June. So I graduated in May. Came down in June, tried out for cheerleading, made the team. So I'm like, TSU it is. Oh, man. <laughs> I didn't even know that you were a cheerleader. Oh. See, everybody learning something new, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. So how would you say that your experience um, in an HBCU was? Because, I mean, yes. um, I, I asked people, all the time, you know, mm -hmm. we, we meet people every day from you know PWIs, um, whatever they yes. be, trade school, technical colleges, anything. Yes, exactly. But it's something about talking to an HBCU alone, and it's so different. It's a yes. culture shock to a lot of people. So, what was your experience like? For me, TSU was definitely a culture shock because, like I said, I grew up, I grew up in the hood. Okay. But I went to good schools. I went mm -hmm. to a private school. So for me. To come down to Nashville, first of all, I'm a city girl. Okay. <laughs> I'm a big city, not, not the city girls, but you know, I'm a city girl. City so girls. <laughs> for me, Nashville was it was country. You know, okay. I got a little twang from being in Nashville for so long. Yeah. Only how I talk now, but 
meeting people all over from Detroit to Memphis, Tennessee, California, St. Louis. I was like, oh, <laughs> from the way people talk, dress, um, mannerisms, men. <laughs> she had to throw that in there. She would. Men, me and guys from different areas, and you know. I bet she liked that part of people. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do me, but no, you know, it was definitely a big culture shock. But one thing I did learn was how to survive mm. because everybody saying in college you broke, you are broke, but you learn yeah, how to manage, yeah, you learn yeah. how to make it work. So, um, another thing I learned really was discipline because when you go to college, you you there on your own. I mean, it's a big family, you have other people, but my mama wasn't there to be like, okay, Brittany, you gotta wake up. She wasn't my alarm clock, mm. so I had to wake up at five to go to chili and practice and run. Then, Decide if I'm gonna go to class or not after I've been turning up yeah. all night. So, yeah, it was definitely a big culture shock for me. So, um, that's definitely what's up. Um, being like you say, you can't teach you a lot of discipline and, and so yes. much more being at a, at a HBCU. Yes. Um, and TSU was all about thinking, working, and serving. That's our motto. So, they taught us how to think outside the box, okay. you know, how to work hard for anything you sign your name to. Like, if you don't sign your name to it, to be committed. Mm -hmm. And then serving, just serving your community, serving your campus. And Everybody else around. Dope, dope, dope. So you got on another shirt here. <laughs> I thought I you never did. <laughs> <laughs> she has to be so extra, people. You know it. <laughs> um, I see that you are a lady of AKA. Yes, of Alpha Gap Alpha Sword Incorporated. To be politically correct. All right. So let's, let's, let's get into this. Okay. Um, D9. Mm -hmm. It's for some people, it's not for some people. But visiting, um, whenever you go on a visit at HBCU, mm -hmm. you're gonna always see Greeks. Yeah, all the time. Um, if you're going to a certain day that they have, they have people, they're gonna always have Greeks on the yard stepping yes. or whatever. Are you gonna see the plots? It, 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 you're gonna see it. You're gonna you see, see the plots, you're gonna see the stone. <laughs> it's gonna be an attention grabber for yes. anybody who's in high school visiting their campus. And people yes. who are out of high school and just may want to attend the HBCU, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, who's already out of high school. Mm -hmm. So, what made you choose AKA? Or did AKA choose you? Um, I think it was both. So I never would have guessed AK when I first met you. So. Really? Nah. You know what? It's crazy that you say that because <laughs> when I ask people, you know, yeah. they, they ask me if I'm in the sorority, and I'm like, guess which one? They never say they AK. Never say AK. So I was like, what y'all trying to say? I'm saying I like AK. <laughs> don't don't get me wrong. I love AK. Uh -huh. I love all sororities. I'm not gonna okay. lie to you. Okay. Yeah, we know. I, you love women. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I that I do. But no, I, I love um I love all sororities. But I just never would have guessed AK though. So I mean they kind of let me know that there's so many different components to you. It but, is because I don't know. I'm just multifaceted. Um, I can be a little hood, like mm -hmm. I said. I can be ratchet at times, but I can be a little bougie. So mm -hmm. people never know what they're gonna get when they come to me. So a lot of people think that I'm a Delta. Both my best friends are Deltas. So maybe that's why. Oh, uh, combination <laughs> Delta, really, Yes, hard. both of them are Deltas. But um, I think that Alpha Cap Alpha Sorority Incorporated, I think it chose me. And I chose it because, going back to what I said earlier, mm -hmm. all of my cheerleading coaches, my dance coaches, my mentors, my teachers, everybody that had an impact on my life growing up mm -hmm. were all AKs. Okay. Oh, dope. Mm -hmm. So in high school, I was in a group uh, called Alpha Pals. So okay. we would do community service on the weekends. We would do the breast cancer walks, the Martin okay. Luther King walks, you know, different things like that. And so for me, it wasn't it wasn't an option. It was AKA. Okay. I was been wearing pink and green since I was like seven, eight. You know, that's that's all I knew. So. So um, did becoming an AKA change? your life in any point, like in any form at all? Or is it like, oh, I'm the same Britney, you know, it's just, I'm an AKA now, or did it really, really implement some things into your life? It did. Um, honestly, becoming a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, it taught me a lot of maturity. Mm. Because I was sheltered a little bit. Okay. So, again, going back to that culture shock thing, when I came to college, I was like, you know, my eyes were, <laughs> they were wide open, not for, men or anything like that but I was just excited and ready to get into everything I wanted to do everything and so it really taught me to calm down a little bit okay. <laughs> and it forced me to grow up and really blossom into the well-rounded young lady and woman that I am today um it's time to have a network definitely 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 have a network is. because hey people always tell you when you're in a sorority or fraternity this is a sisterhood and a brotherhood for life so yeah I've gotten jobs just because yeah, I'm AK. Okay, yeah, I'll be you know? that. and I was vice president, so I had to learn how to talk to 
different organizations, talk to the higher ups at TSU to get things, you know, events approved and it taught me how to network, of course discipline, and how to handle business. Dope. I forgot about that one. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> that's, that's definitely what's up. Alright, so going to an HBCU, yeah. um, pledge in a divine eye organization. The best one. And come, first of all, what was your major? Okay, so a lot of people don't know my major was psychology. Psychology. Yep. So you like, like to, to read minds. <laughs> I like to get in people's heads. What made you choose, I mean, that as a major? Out of, it's a million majors out here. It is, psychology. it is. But I've always been interested and curious to know why people do what they do, mm -hmm. how they think, you know. Um, and for me, you know, I'm going to get a little personal real quick and be transparent, but okay. my father wasn't in my life, okay. uh, so I dealt with that. Um, well, he was a little bit, but he was in the streets. He was in the drugs. My grandfather, same thing. So I wanted to know why. Mm, why it. are they doing this? You know, why are they putting these things before their families and different things like that? So that kind of was the driving force behind it. And then I just naturally, I'm curious. I, I'll meet somebody. Like, huh. I want to know all about them. I don't know why. Yeah, and I really genuinely be interested. Like, I really listen to him. That's, that's <laughs> it's dope. weird. That's dope. That's dope. All right, so by your major being psychology, mm. I mean, what made you, now you are a radio host, <laughs> um, a model, actress, yeah. how, how did that shift from psychology to entertainment? Well, you know, one thing about it, it's really no different. Mm. Because with me being naturally curious about other people, with I know with acting, it allowed me to step into their shoes okay. and take on that role, okay. take on that character. Um, but and while, while I was attending TSU, Modeling was an outlet for me. It was a coping skill. Gotcha. Because with cheerleading and AKA, I didn't have time to do anything else. I didn't have time to join the modeling team and do this and do that <laughs> like I wanted to, you know. Yeah, a lot of time. A lot of time. It gets, okay? Most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Majority of the time. And so for me, modeling was my outlet. It was my coping skill. And I would just do it for fun, you know, to clear my head or to do a little calendar for my boyfriend or something. But, um, yeah. <laughs> No, but seriously, it. And this interview is. It was about to be over, people. No, go ahead. no, but seriously, it was an outlet for me. So um, that's kind of how I got started. Okay. Somebody was like, hey, you got to look, you should do this seriously. I'm like, mm, okay. And then modeling led to acting. I left my career. Mm -hmm. I was a case manager for six years, using my degree. Okay. So you did use it. Well, I got two of them. So I was using both of them. And that's another thing. I got a master's in counseling. Two, two degrees, people. <laughs> I need, know what you're gonna I, need, do. I need a counselor anyway. So. I don't think I can counsel you. No. She, she I, always gives me a hard time. I'll be a listening ear. <laughs> she always gives me a hard time. I'll be a listening oh, ear. I'll goodness. be a listening ear, but you know, so I left my job and moved out here to Lambda to follow my dream. So. Okay, so you wear so many hats. What yes. do you like best out of modeling, hosting, um, radio personality, um, you know what? acting? That's a good question. I don't think nobody's ever asked me that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What do I like best? Honestly, I just like inspiring people. Um, I love entertaining people. It's not for me. It's I do this for for y'all, for other people to say, hey, I know Brittany. I grew up with Brittany. If she can do it, I can do it. Okay. You know, Tyler Perry's out here making moves and major moves. Major, <laughs> major moves. Okay, my whole mood is Tyler Perry this week. Okay, <laughs> and I just want to be able to be in a position like that. Yeah. yeah. To do for my people, my family, my community. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, what has going to Tennessee State University, as well as being a, a lady of AKA, mm -hmm. what has that implemented in your life that you've carried into what you do now? Mm, okay. You said discipline earlier. Yes. So I, I know it's always discipline, but yes. outside of that, what else is it? So what has TSU taught me? And AKA. Yeah, that you that you have that, that I mean that you've carried on into mm -hmm. to hosting, acting, modeling your your whole career right now. Pretty much going back to that whole thing of thinking, working, serving. When I say working, pretty putting my name or giving one hundred and ten percent to anything I put my name to. Okay. If Brittany says she's gonna do it, then I'm gonna commit to it, then I'm gonna do it. Whether it's modeling, whether it's acting, radio personality, I'm giving 110 percent in each. I'm not gonna do twenty percent over here and you know fifty percent over here. They all gonna get me, 110% of me. So that's one thing that AKA and TSU taught me. Always give 110% and be, be committed because you can't be no t-shirt wearer. You can't be no t-shirt wearer 
at TSU. You can't be no t-shirt wearer. Nope. And Apple Cap Apple Sorority Incorporated. And you definitely can't be a t-shirt wearer in life. Hey, you heard it. And if y'all know where t-shirt wearer is, look it up. a little bit like a <laughs> cloud chasing a little bit. You just doing it just because it looks good. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. So tell the people about any project that you have. Like anything that you've been in. Um, things that you have going on. Now, the radio show, what inspired the radio show, how did it come about? Because I know this is like a new venture for you, right? Yes, it All is. Right. It is. So, um, to answer your first question, I've been in a lot of projects, so you'll just have to go to my Instagram or my website, uh, Brittany Passion, I think it's edwigs.com, to find some of my past projects. Right now I'm working on a play. Okay. So I'm in the play Saturday. I'm excited about that. What's the name of the play? It's called Hosea. Hosea? Where is it? Where is it going? Is it going to be here in Atlanta? Or yes. What? Well, no. It's going to be at Griffin Auditorium. Okay. In Griffin, Georgia. So okay. it's about an hour away. Depending on where you live for me, it's two hours away. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. But um, I'm in a play, and I play the lead female, Gomer. It's based on the biblical story of Hosea and Gomer. So look that up if y'all want to know more information. That takes um, a lot of time, though, right? Like, it does. Being on the play takes a lot of time. It does. It does. Um, it's different. Is it's it a different rush than t TV and film. Is it something that you got into and you was like, hey, I want to do this? And then when you found out how much time it took, you was like, <sighs> but you said you had to uh -huh. do it 100%. I, I go in every day like it's a new day. Okay. Because at the end of the day, this is what I asked for. Mm. And I'm not going to complain. You know what I'm saying? They have a meme going around that says something about don't complain about having too much on your plate. The goal was deep. <laughs> okay. So That's true. I go in every day with a new mentality. And be ready to work. But I think you asked me, oh, question about radio person. Yeah. So that is a new venture for me. I love entertaining, I love talking, as you can see. <laughs> uh, me and my best friend decided to start a radio show called The Soul of Atlanta. The Soul is spelled S O L E, okay. meaning the foundation, okay. the purpose. Um, so what we do is we interview people all over Atlanta um, actors, models, fitness, doctors, lawyers, okay. everybody who make up, who move to Atlanta. You know, to follow their dreams okay. and are doing good things, or who are from here and better in their community. So it's like it's the soul of Atlanta. These people are making up Atlanta. And I like want to know why. I told you, I'm I curious. Like I want to know <laughs> why do you do what you do and how did it come about? And I liked it, the soul of Atlanta. Um, when I first saw the title, I was kind of curious myself as to why is it the soul of Atlanta. So then I saw a hill on there, and I'm like, okay, maybe it just had something to do with <laughs> and hills because it's that's a little and, bit and, part and, and, of and, it. And, 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 <laughs> I don't know, but I liked it. The foundation. Mm -hmm. that, that's, the soul of the hill. And dope. then um, the acronym is TSA. That has okay. to do with the airport. We're okay. from Dayton, Ohio. Home of aviation. So we black girls. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay, I like that. I like that. So where can the people find the show at? So you where can, can they listen show, to it find it? You can find it on the soul of... Oh, no. I lied. The soul of ATL <laughs> underscore show. Okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> yes. Um, and we go YouTube live and Instagram live, but eventually we'll be pre-taped on so. Okay, cool, cool. Yes, and you need to come on there. Man, look, I'm ready. Because you do a lot, too. I'm on you the jack of all trades, so. Um, anything. <laughs> <laughs> don't matter me. So man. we need you on our show. This, this is about you right now. This is okay, about you. Okay, okay. So this is what we're going to do. We're about, as a matter of fact, we're going to get into a little game. Uh, wait, what kind of game? No, no, it's, it's a no, no, PG it's, game, right? It's I got my AK shirt on. I'm representing It's very PG. It's very okay. PG. Okay. It's fun. Okay, okay. This is some insights about Miss Brittany Passion, you know, during her journey. Well, I'm ready, man. So I got like, I got like 10 questions. I'm going to make some more. Yeah. We're not going to go to all 10. Okay, okay, I, want okay. To, I want you to pick like two or three. All right, go ahead and pick the first one. One um, with the number on it. I'm going to go with number nine. You're going with number nine. You would say number nine. I don't even know what number nine is no more. So we're uh, gonna, D9, we're, we're I gonna guess. go with we're gonna just go with just pick one. We keep picking one with a number on here. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go with this one. You're gonna go with six. Yeah. Okay, easy question. Do you prefer spring or fall semester? Ooh. You know what? I prefer spring semester. Fall semester is always hard. It's wow. hard. Midterms, and you getting back from summer break, and you just ain't really feeling it. Spring mm -hmm. semester is where it's turned up. That's where all yeah. the step shows happen, all the Greek weeks. Spring semester is lit. It's lit. It's it very, is. Very, I probate. <laughs> very much so. Yes. Lit. Very much so. Five semester boo. I'm with you on that one. Spring <laughs> semester. All right. Pick another one. Two. Two. Got like two, two, low. Okay. Did, did you? No, it's not. It's not bad. It's not bad. You didn't even pick the bad ones, unfortunately for me. <laughs> did you prefer on-campus living or off-campus? Um, I lived on campus. Okay. All four years. The first two years, I lived in the dorm, and I hated it. 
Um, so really I was staying with my boo. <laughs> but uh, the last two years I stayed on. You don't, don't want to shout him out? Okay, all right. Hey, homecoming this next week. I just want to say, I don't want any hey big head or hey stranger text because you home comes next week. But anyway, um, and in the last two years, I stayed in our off-campus okay. apartments, but it was still on campus. So. Which one I did you like? Campus. Well, okay, did you like the apartments better? Or the the apartments. Yeah. The apartments. All right, cool, cool, cool. Definitely. Cool. All right, I'm going to pick one more question. Um, I'm going to let you pick. <laughs> I don't even know what's on these. This is a crazy thing. I don't know what all is left on here. Oh, Lord. I should have picked <laughs> What's the five? It? What is your most embarrassing moment? I don't know why I was not going to get this question. Um, <laughs> most embarrassing moment. Ooh, I'm trying to think about it. Well, I've had a lot. I plead the fifth on that one. Pick another question. You can't plead the fifth. My most embarrassing moment? Yeah. <laughs> I got a little messed up. Got a little messed up one time and I threw up all over uh, my line sister's BMW, all white, and she had peanut butter, peanut butter seats. And um, she was not happy. And I was so embarrassed because it was my birthday, my birthday was New Year's Eve. I was feeling myself, oh, wow. thought I was looking good, and everybody saw me. And um, back then, thank God social media wasn't around. That's all I'm going to say. It was around, but people wasn't really recording. She got the fight. She got the fight. But look, anyway. Okay. <laughs> not then. You would. You we would. don't fight. Women of Africa, I'm sorry. We do not fight. Anyway, whatever, people, whatever, whatever. Go ahead and tell the people, man, where they can find you on Instagram, where they can find you on your Facebook, whatever. And, yeah, yeah, so I don't have Facebook. I deleted it once I became an actor. <laughs> but Instagram, you can follow me at Brittany Passion, B R I T T A N Y underscore Passion. Okay, dope, dope, dope. Well, definitely, thank you for coming on the show. Yes, thank you for having me, Big Steve. Thank you. you can come back hey. anytime, anytime. Turn up. <laughs> Once again, you have been tuned in to another episode of Historically Black Sense the Culture. Make sure you follow our website. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at Historically Black Sense. It's your boy DC signing out again. <laughs>